Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Saturday, June 14th Classroom 2.0 Live show. Today's topic is using Evernote in the classroom with our special guest, Jeff Bradbury, who's logged in as TeacherCast. The show hosts are Peggy George, Lori Moffat, that's me. I've got the microphone on as well as TeacherCast. And Tammy Moore, who's doing closed captioning for us today. Thanks very much for that, Tammy. Here's the live binder for today. Peggy did just post in chat that if the links in the live binder that you see here across the, the left of the first page don't work, those pages very well may be under construction. And they, they will work, but they may currently not be in operation. Uh, the link is in chat right now. All of rec the recordings for Classroom 2.0 Live are posted at the Archives and Resources page at live.classroom20.com slash archive dash and dash resources dot html. And you can find the full recording of this show as well as some other versions of it at that page. Here is where we get interactive. Uh, Please use that pointer, the second one down, and show us on the world map where you are logging in from. I'm logging in from central Pennsylvania. I know Tammy's logging in from southwest Arkansas. Peggy normally logs in from Phoenix, Arizona, but isn't today. She's logging in from Pittsburgh, North Carolina, I think is what I read. And Jeff, I have forgotten where you're logging in from. If the pointer doesn't work, you can type New Jersey. That's right. Uh, you can type in the chat your location. Depending on your device, you might not be able to use the whiteboard. Mobile sometimes doesn't work. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, North Carolina. Northern Jersey. I used to live near southern New Jersey. We do have an international crowd today. We do have some people from Europe, I see. Here's our first polling question. And remember, this is not where you vote. You vote with the tool right underneath your name in bold at the top of the participants list. Do you use Evernote either personally or professionally? And it's yes or no. Green check for yes, red X for no. Yeah, no tools on an iPad, right? You've got to type in the in the chat your answer. And I will post those responses to the whiteboard. And from those that responded, over half, 55% do use Evernote. You should still have the voting tool, Techno Clown. It's underneath your name. Our next polling question, after I clear the first, do you use Evernote with your students? Yeah, that voting choice is in a whiteboard tool. Evernote's blocked at school. Hmm. And I'll post that series of responses to the whiteboard. 15% said yes to that one, with 50% saying no. Our third question, have you created notes, notebooks, and stacks in Evernote? I'm not sure how to choose two out of three.
and I'll post these answers. Thirty-eight percent have, but it looks like a lot in the chat say they haven't used stacks yet, and I will join that group. I've used notes but, and notebooks, but not stacks. Again, welcome to our topic today, using Evernote in the classroom. Peggy George, Lori Moffat, and Tammy Moore are your hosts. Our special guest is Jeff Bradbury. Jeff is a highly respected educational consultant. He has presented at ISTE, the International Society for Technology and Education, as well as other nationally recognized conferences, and is one of the founding organizers of EdCamp New Jersey. In 2013, he was honored by the keynote speaker, to, honored to be the keynote speaker at the Pearson Authentic Learning Conference. Additionally, the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Net Network has served educational and medical conventions across the country by, by providing on-site live broadcasting to thousands of educators each week. Jeffrey Bradbury, the crea creator of TeacherCast.net and TeacherCast University, is a speaker, writer, broadcaster, consultant, and educational media specialist. He's the director of orchestras in the North Brunswick Township School District, where he teaches music theory and music history, as well as directs a wonderful high school orchestra that he's proud of. In 2012, he was recognized as one of the top 50 educators using social media at the first ever BAMI Awards. He was also selected as a Google certified teacher. And uh, in his free time, he enjoys teaching, broadcasting, playing violin, conducting, and spending time with his wife Gen Jennifer and their seven-month-old triplets. So I'll ask the newbie question to Jeff, and then Jeff, you may take over the, the presentation. What is Evernote? And as you, as you proceed, I'll be gathering questions. Well, thank you for the introduction. Good morning, everybody. It is really, really nice to see everybody here today. We have definitely an international audience. And before I answer the newbie question, I want to say a great big huge thank you to Peggy, who has been amazing this week in helping us get together, especially since uh, TeacherCast has gone through so many changes in the last two weeks. She has been absolutely amazing, keeping links up to date and live binders, and, and uh, especially from uh, you know, she's not in her home studio at the moment. So definitely please make sure that you're following P. George on Twitter and uh, in the chat box. Say some nice things to her. She is absolutely amazing. And if you are going to ISTE this year, she loves it when you go up and uh, take a selfie picture with her. And uh, she loves getting hugs from everybody. So please make sure that you uh, say a big thank you to, to Peggy for putting this all together. Also want to thank Tammy and Lori for being awesome moderators today. So. The question is simple, and the question is what we're here to figure out today. Um, while, we're, while I'm answering the question here, I am going to just ask for a mic check. If things are a little bit hot, let me know. I can pull the volume back a little. So what is Evernote? Evernote, in a sentence, is simply the one tool that an educator cannot live without. Um, my Evernote birthday was August of 2013. I'm actually coming up on a year uh, almost for, for being an Evernote junkie. And I got to tell you, before we even start this presentation, a year ago, I didn't understand what it was. Um, I've heard about it. I've watched presentations on it. I attended web, uh, webinar sessions on Evernote. I didn't get it. But um, I do a live show on Sunday nights called the Tech Educator Podcast, and we're live on Sundays at 7 o'clock, um, techeducatorpodcast.com. And we did a session on Evernote, and I tried it. I, just, I gave it a shot. I jumped right in, and I said, okay, I'm going to try this thing. And very quickly you realize, oh, my goodness, this is the one tool that you can't live without. You know, there's a lot of things out there that you can try, or maybe this is good for some teachers but not others, but, but by far, across the board, everything is there. What is it? It's a cloud storage application. It allows users to add notes, text, audio, images, anything that you have on your desktop, it will take. Um, and we're going to get into a lot of details today. But essentially, if you have something, Evernote can store it. It is the one 
storage bin that there is no bottom for. In fact, I've also said it, you know, it is education's bottomless pit. There are so many things. It remembers everything. And I think the, the idea that if you just remember it is an elephant, you know, no matter where you go, you have your trunk packed. It is the one place that no matter if you're on an iOS, an Apple, a Mac, a desktop, an Android, a Windows, everything that you need is right there. And also, again, we're going to talk about this later, it's one of the few platforms that no matter if you're on a mobile device or if you're on a desktop device, about 99% of everything you can do on, on Evernote for desktop, you can do on Evernote for mobile. Um, a lot of these EdTech tools that come out don't have the features that you can use for both, but I've got to tell you, Evernote is absolutely awesome. I use it in my personal life. I use it in my private life. I use it in my professional life. I use it to help me get my taxes done. I, I use it to help me keep my kids organized, all the doctor visits, all the meetings that we have. It is simply the best educational tool out there. And I hope in the next uh, 45 minutes or so, we can convince you to sign up for a free trial. So this is Evernote. I have titled this 10 reasons why you should be using Evernote, but I think in the first 30 seconds since I've started talking, we've gone through more than 10. So maybe we'll have to redesign that slide a little bit. Um, so what is Evernote? Well, it helps you capture anything, and it basically helps you capture everything. It's, it's viewable on all devices. It's shareable. You can take notes with it. You can create lesson plans, collaborate on projects. It is good for capturing photos, videos, audio, presentations. Basically, you can create and organize anything that you want. Now, in the chat right now, I'm going to throw at you three scenarios that I want you to think about as we talk here. Scenario number one is that you're a teacher and you want to come up with a project for the year where you're going to be helping your kids create digital portfolios. Scenario two is you have a presentation to make, maybe at an ed camp or maybe on Classroom 2.0, but you really don't have the time to put this presentation together. And then scenario three is you're in this panic mode. Your hard drive is crashing. Your world is crumbling. You have all this digital data that you saved on your hard drive, and you're realizing that you're only seconds away from having a major mental breakdown here because all of your, you know, your precious things are basically getting eaten up by digital junk, and it's going to be quickly, you know, quickly is coming here, and you're not going to have uh, access to these things pretty quickly. What do you do? How do you back it all up? This is why Evernote is important. Um, I will explain some of these, I'll explain all of these scenarios as we go through the process here, but all of these things happen to me, and this is why Evernote is wonderful, and this is why Evernote is the app for you, no matter where you are. Again, it is that one thing that you can keep with you no matter where it is. As we're doing this presentation, you know, I'll tell you, if you don't want to watch these slides, that's perfectly fine. I want you also to go to Evernote.com, and I want you to sign up for an account. Maybe you have an account out there that you signed up for, and you're like, I don't know what this is. I'll wait till later. Or, hey, I'm going to sign up now, and, and that teacher cast guy is going to help me out. While we're talking today, I want you to go to Evernote. I want you to sign up for a free account. I want you to experience some of these things that we're talking about. And if you have questions, I am available to answer these questions. Um, there's a ton of Evernote resources on TeacherCast, and we've done many shows on them, and I've done many webinars on Evernote. There's a lot of resources over at TeacherCast.net that you can check out. The neat thing about Evernote is it organizes things. It organizes things in a very neat way. Let me pull up my little tab here. On the side here, uh, let's start with this. Right here in the middle is our main bar. This is, you know, if you can run Microsoft Word or if you can run a Google Doc, you can run Evernote. To put basic text in, to just take it and make notes on it. You know, say you're in a meeting, say you're at a doctor's office, say you're talking to your friend and you're taking notes on whatever, you can put stuff into Evernote. You can add pictures into Evernote. Over here we have a list of all of the different places, or sorry, of all the different Evernotes. And then over here we have things like here's our notes, here's our notebooks. I know this might be a little bit difficult to see at first, 
Don't worry, I have a slide presentation that you can look at these, you can download, and also at the end we're going to do some application sharing. If you have any specific questions, um, we can do the application sharing at the end. I don't want to uh, go back and forth at the moment here. So we have things like notes, notebooks. Evernote is organized by two things. It's organized into notebooks and it's organized into tags. So metadata is really, really important. And we'll talk a little bit more about metadata. There's a button here for Atlas. One of the neat things about Evernote is it actually knows where you are. Again, we'll talk about this later, but why that's important. Um, there's something called the Evernote Markets where they have some really cool accessories that go on with this. You can actually buy scan, uh, digital scanners where you can take reams of paper, put them in a scanner, and it automatically goes to Evernote. Or your um, business cards you can scan things in, or you name it, it will do all that for you. And a little bit later, we're going to touch on premium. Now, in this notebook here, it says I've got 329 notes found. How do you organize all that stuff? Well, it does keep a list of recent notes. And it also, if you want, I can just take one of these notes and drag it over here into shortcuts. Let's say that I was writing a lesson plan, like this one, and I wanted to have it for tomorrow morning. Well, instead of searching for it when I get to class, I can just have it here. Right up here, we have the little sync sync button, and again, if I do it in my desktop and I go to school and I open it up on my iPad, it automatically is syncing. It automatically works. Again, it is the one tool that you cannot live without. All of these notes go into notebooks. Now, notebooks look differently depending on what platform you're using. This happens to be what the Evernote for Mac platform looks like. If you look at it on Windows, it's a little bit difficult, uh, a little bit different to look at. Same thing on Android. But essentially, you have notes that can go into notebooks. I want to back up a little bit because people were asking, well, what can go in here? And again, I said pictures, audio. You can actually record audio into the note. You can't record video into the notes, but you can actually embed video directly. So if I had video outside of the, you know, on my desktop or something, or if I had a video on my iPad, I can actually save the video into the Evernote itself. Um, as long as the note is not bigger than 100 megabytes, which that's really hard to do these days, um, you can put anything that you want to in these notes. The neat part about this, and I'm jumping ahead with all these different slides, but the neat part about this is if you have a website, if you are on WordPress or Blogger, this here is the best tool, I believe, to copy and paste into WordPress or Blogger. We used to actually do all of our show notes in Google Docs and then copy them into WordPress. But the problem with that is that Google Docs organizes things and codes things a little bit differently than WordPress does or than Blogger does. But if you're taking your notes in here, let's say you're writing a blog post, I'd rather write my blog post in Evernote and then put it over into my WordPress doc. It's actually a lot easier and you'll find that the copy and paste works almost 100% accurately. Um, so what I do is I open up my Evernote and if somebody can get rid of that L in there, that would be great. Um, I actually get, I open up my Evernote and um, I put my featured image in, I, I write my post, I put my links, and then from there, I then copy that into WordPress. So there, there's a lot of reasons why I would rather use Evernote than Google Docs. Again, notes go into notebooks. Notebooks goes into stacks. Now, um, if you think of live binders, which we're using right now to keep track of everything, we have a binder and then a binder goes on the shelf. And a shelf can have many live binders in it. And Evernote works the same way. A stack is essentially a bunch of Evernote notebooks. And an Evernote notebook is a bunch of notes. And you can have unlimited of all about all of these things. Right here is a little button that has uh, three little people on it. And so you can actually share this with other people. So for instance, this violin music, all these different folders here I have shared. And I'll, you know, I can show you this at the end here, but you can get a, a URL. You can get, uh, you know, share this on Twitter, share this on Facebook. You can make these private. You can make these public. There was a, a message here I saw in the chat about security. It is very secure. Um, I'm not going to you know, go on public and say it's 100% secure. That certainly would be ludicrous to do that. But 
it is a secure thing, you know, much like a Google Doc is is secure, but it it isn't, but it is. Um, so I I don't have any issue with this. Um, you know, personally, I put a lot of stuff into Evernote, and you know, there are apps that we can talk about that you know you can download your bank statements, download your taxes, download your uh, medical records, all those different things. So I, I mean, I use it as a secure doc. Many people around the world certainly do. Talk a little bit about some of the features of what Evernote does. We said that it's organized into notebooks. And on the left here, we can see that we have some notebooks. On the top here, it's organized into this little hierarchy. And so here, um, we have some chiropractic notebooks that I have. Here is an app called Cloud Outliner, which does um, outlining. And it syncs up between your iPad and your Mac and stuff. Here's my EdCamp notebook. Here's all my baby stuff. So you can see. I have one notebook that underneath of here has many, many different stacks. Each stack actually can be a reminder. This is one of the best ways to set reminders for yourself if you're not going to go through a calendar. Let's say that you are doing a presentation um, for a, an event. You can create your notes in Evernote and then set a reminder and it, you know, it alarms your phone or it alarms your iPad or your, your, your email or whatever to let you know that, hey, you either have to keep working on this or your presentation time is up. There's a really, really neat reminder feature on here. It is absolutely invaluable. Again, as far as sharing, we can share at the URL. So I can give you the link to my um, Evernote presentation. Um, I can open this in my Safari browser. I can post it to a link. I can email it to you. And of course, I can share a note. So it is very, very social. So the question is, what is the difference between a Google Doc and an Evernote notebook? Um, people say, well, Google Docs are collaborative. If I want to do something collaborative, I'm going to use Google. And absolutely, if you want to have two or three people or more working at the same time on a document, yeah, go in and use Google Docs. It is wonderful. I do it all the time. Is Evernote collaborative? Well, that's a yes or no question. You cannot have two people working on a single Ever notebook at the same time. However, if I have uh, access to Evernote Premium, which we're going to talk about in our next slide, I can share my note with you, and you can write in it and edit it and change it. And then when you're not using it, then I can. And we can go back and forth that way. For example, on Sunday night, uh, one of my co-hosts, Sam, is in charge of doing the show notes. So while we're doing our show, he's writing everything in Evernote. When the show is over, he syncs it up, and then I get the note updated, and I put the graphics in, and I do all the other stuff, and then I, I put it into to WordPress. So my tech educator crew is working on a single Evernote notebook that has all of our show notes in it from the last couple months. So it is collaborative. Don't let people think that it isn't. One of the things that you need to do to make it collaborative is sign up for Evernote Premium. Now, let me tell you this. I'm, I'm not trying to sell Evernote Premium. And if you never use Evernote Premium or if you don't want to purchase it, that is fine. There are so many things that you can get out of using the free version of Evernote. But let me share with you a couple things that you can get. Um, first of all, it's only 45 bucks out of the year. I, I don't want to do the, you know, it's, it's less than the price of coffee thing, but it's only 45 bucks. I got to tell you, it's, it's, it's the best 45 bucks that you can spend. Number one, it is smarter when it searches. Now, backing up a little bit, we said that when you save a note, you save metadata, you can save it into notebooks, you can save it in many, many different forms of metadata as, as you want. And it will find all those documents really, really easy by searching right here. However, using Evernote Premium, you're actually unlocking something called Smart Search. This is cool. So sit down and get ready for this one. Smart Search actually reads your documents. It will actually go in and read your PDFs. So for instance, if I was to open up my Evernote and I was to search under the, na uh, under the word Peggy, let's just say for random words here, if I was to search Peggy, it would actually go through every single note that I have 
and it will find all the notes that are called Peggy, all the notes that are meta tagged as Peggy, and it'll go into every single PDF, Word doc, you name it, everything that I have in there, and it'll actually tell me which notes and which PDF files have the name Peggy. It'll actually go through and look at all of your pictures. Now, I think later on down here I have some slides that talk about the pictures, um, but essentially if you're sitting at, if you're in front of a sign, or if you're taking a picture of something with words, it'll actually read the words on that, on that picture. I see a few slides here, so we'll definitely get into that. So Smart Search, you know, look, for 45 bucks, um, most of us have student handbooks that we deal with, and they come in PDF form. I will actually just take the whole PDF form, I'll put it into Evernote, and I'll have Evernote read the handbook to me. So that way, if I ever needed to talk to a kid about a discipline area, I just go into Evernote and search the word discipline code, and it pops up the note, it pops up the document, it even highlights the word, and it tells me the exact page that it's actually on. I don't have to read a 300-page document. I wish the kids had this feature. Um, peace of mind, it also gives you a little bit more um, internet security. Um, talks about, you can have passcodes in here. Uh, right here it says put more in, get more out. I think it's like 100 megs or 300 megs is the limit that you can upload in a month in uh, regular Evernote. I think it's like 250 or 300 megs. And for most people, they'll never hit that. I mean, the general Evernote is not going to go over, you know, a meg or two. But if you start using Evernote and you're putting pictures in it and you want to put some videos, yeah, you're going to hit that rather quickly. So with that, it actually gives you a gigabyte of space for uploading and you know, again, when I first started Evernote, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I certainly didn't want to be paying for this thing I didn't know about. And then I started putting in PDF file after PDF file of sheet music so I can organize my kids. It is two gigabytes. Wow, they must have changed that. Um, and so quickly, I, I, you know, I had like 900 megabytes of PDF files that I was using. It was wonderful to be able to do that. Also, presentations, and I, I can't, even with application sharing, I, I just can't share with you how wonderful this is. I know I did a webinar of it a while ago. I'm not sure if the link is up there for, for Peggy yet in the live binder, but I did use a, I, I did make a demo of Evernote presentation when it came out. It is simply awesome, and uh, I can't say enough about that. So 45 bucks gets you an awful, awful lot, and I will stop right there because I'm not, I don't work for Evernote. But I, I certainly think that it, it, it works there. So let's start the presentation. <laughs> Simply put, Evernote, you can bring with you everywhere you go. Again, desktop, whatever you need, it's there. If you're sitting at a, at a coffee shop and you start writing down some ideas, it will take things for you. And remember, right here it says remember everything, and here it says web. It is actually reading that text. And it actually does a pretty good job at reading your handwriting, too. It is an amazing app. They've just updated it a few months ago. It is completely redesigned for iOS. It is completely redesigned for, for iPad. It looks beautiful. It works amazing. Everything that you can, you can get. You can create a new document here. You can take a picture with it. You can scan things in. Now, there is an app called Evernote Hello, which is pretty cool. But uh, recently, Evernote actually took that app and kind of engulfed it into itself. And what Evernote Hello was is a business card scanner. Um, how many of you guys are going to ISTE this year? Or how many of you guys go to any conferences and you have all these business cards? Forget about them. When you meet somebody, just take out your Evernote, scan in the business card. It'll do two things. It will automatically take a picture of the business card. It will translate the business card into text and if you sync things up, it'll also link your LinkedIn approach or your LinkedIn profile with that person's. So automatically, you guys can be cyber locked and you have your LinkedIn co connections and it'll also put that person into your contact list. So many, many reasons why this is good to use. And if you are going to Evernote, please uh, take a moment to check us out. And if you're not going to Evernote, please, uh, to ISTE, wow. Please take a moment to check us out. Uh, TeacherCast is going to be live broadcasting from ISTE uh, 9 to 12 every single morning. So if you can't make it to the big event, certainly uh, check in. Under your account info, there are so many neat things that Evernote offers. Again, here is the one gigabyte of storage, although I saw somebody in the chat say they might have gone up to two megabytes. 
This right here says email notes to. Now, how many of you guys have an inbox of more than 18,000 emails? Raise your hand. I, I, I know you're out there raising your hand right now. There is, <laughs> yes, there is an email that it gives you. And if you put that email into, <laughs> if you put that email into your uh, contact list, all I do is simply take the, the emails that I want to keep and I put them into Evernote. So everything is saved. Everything, and it takes the attachments, it takes the movies, the videos, the pictures, everything. It automatically goes into that. So the other day, I had an inbox of about 1,200 emails. And next thing I know, I had an inbox of 58 emails. And most of it was deleted stuff. But a lot of it was, I'm just sending it to, to Evernote. I'm making a, a, a notebook that says, old junky email. That means that I can go to Google, you know, Gmail and, and Yahoo and all the other places that I keep my email addresses and delete all that stuff. I can make the space a little bit easier. Let Evernote hold everything that you need. So definitely check this feature out if you haven't. It's wonderful. Um, many of us look at websites on our mobile devices. You know, I just take the website address and I email it to myself. And so there's a lot of neat ways that you can use Evernote and your email client at the same time. So let's go on and see how we can use this. By the way, have I sold anybody on Evernote yet? I mean, has anybody been converted over here? <laughs> how can we use Evernote? Lesson planning. How many of you guys hate lesson planning? I, I, everybody, raise your hand. I, I hate lesson planning. I always try to find the way to get everything done, but do it in the smallest amount of time possible. And what is the problem with lesson planning? It's always, always changing from one year to the next. Well, why not create a notebook that has your lesson plans in it? Now, one of the neat things, and again, I know things are smaller and bigger, but bear with me on here. You can easily put your lesson plans into Evernote. You can put meta tags into it. So I have Evernote, lesson plan, presentation. And again, just like Word, you've got your text, you've got your fonts, bold italicized underlined, you can justify it. You can do all of these neat little things. Here, by the way, are the buttons that I really, really love. The microphone button, obviously, you can start an audio recording. So while you're giving your lesson plan or while you're, while you're thinking about it, um, you can take an audio note. How many of you guys drive home and you have all these great ideas hitting your heads? You can sit here and simply use the audio function to brainstorm. And then when you get home, you've got the dock with your audio and you can start typing away. This button here is your pictures. It'll automatically take pictures for you through your desktop, through your Mac, through your PC, through your mobile device. And then, of course, you have the clip if you want to put any pictures into it. So I can make this lesson as dynamic as I want. Now, we use... Uh, a lesson planning software in my school that isn't quite as robust as this. So I want to have a lesson plan that I know works and has all these great things, but my supervisor certainly doesn't seem to care about that stuff, and he doesn't need to see all that. He just wants to know that I have the basic lesson plan outlined down. But I want to know where all my movies are. So to keep your lesson plans in Evernote and make it dynamic and rich and change it and all these wonderful things, it does not yet have a feature, I'm reading the chat here, does not have a feature to transcribe the audio notes. I would actually do that through a Google Chrome extension, which we can talk about that later if you, if you send me an email. Um, so that is an amazing thing that we can do here is we can take this and completely make this into a dynamic lesson plan with, with links and features and movies and audio um, right here is the present tool. Again, I really can't show you this through Blackboard, but if I click that presentation tool, it would pop up to full screen and it would show everything in all of its glory, websites, uh, videos, everything, you name it. So here is a great, again, it's the best tool out there for lesson planning. Take whatever you need out of this and send that to your boss. But in the meantime, put everything you need in here. And then next, and I would just put here, chapter one biology or chapter two or whatever and organize it the best way that you can. Um, I'm going to try my best at the end to do the app sharing because of bandwidth. And if there's, there are just some things that I can't share. Like it'll, it'll, when I go into presentation mode, it'll pop up on my screen and it probably won't pop up through Blackboard Connect. 
Um, but but I do have some uh, some Evernote presentations that we can go through. So Web Clipper, another great tool. If you are searching through websites for your lesson plans or with your kids, you can do a few things. Number one, you can email them to yourself. And just like I showed you with that email address, it'll make an email with that link. Or you can clip the website itself. When you download the extension, it puts a little elephant onto your browser. And then when you click that, you have a couple options. What do you want to click? You can save the whole article. You can save a simplified article, which means it takes out all the advertisements and the sidebars and all the junk. You can save the full page. You can bookmark it. If you want, you can take that website and you can mark it up. So for instance, if you found a website on uh, the Gulf War, let's say, but you wanted to mark it up, you can annotate this in any way and then share it with your kids. And there's the, there's the website, there's the annotations. You can tag it, you can tell it what notebook. So you can, before it even gets to Evernote, you can have it exactly what you want it to look like and where you want it to look like. It's pretty amazing. Lists. Lists are amazing. If you think about your lesson plans that we showed you, Back in this slide here, this looks nice, but this is pretty dull. However, if you go into list view, you can actually put these check boxes here. And the check boxes, let me come back to this, the check box is right here, is the check box. And what that does is it makes some pretty cool check boxes. So when I'm doing my lesson plans in front of my kids, I often at times have my iPad in front of me and I'm reading, you know, I'm, I'm using Evernote as my teleprompter. Well, at the end of the day, I, I want to know where I've left off. Or maybe this lesson is multiple, multiple, multiple days. I want to know where I've left off. So at the end, I just check, 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 and I know exactly where I need to go back to next week or the next lesson. If I wanted to, I can always, say, you know, take attendance, parentheses, so-and-so wasn't here today. So there's a lot of neat things that you can do just by taking um, you know, making things into lists. This also works great when you're going to the grocery store. This also works great. The other day I had a, a, a medical meeting um, with my kids. So I was in a big meeting with a bunch of doctors and I had everything organized in Evernote with checklists. I, I walked away having exactly what I needed. Again, it's an elephant. You just don't forget anything with Evernote here. My goodness, the time is flying. Calendars, calendar reminders are awesome. Put in a calendar reminder on your Evernote doc, and you know when it's done. For instance, I was taking some online courses, and at the beginning of the online course, I took the syllabus and opened that up, and I made an Evernote note for each assignment that I needed. And what I did was I actually opened up an Evernote, I pasted in the assignment, and I put the date on it. And so, you know, at the beginning of the 16-week course, I had 16 Evernotes, each with the assignment on it and the due date. And so that way, it just sent me a reminder that says, oh, by the way, February 9th, you have this due, and February 16th, you have this due, and et cetera, et cetera. It just works. Um, it is a great way of keeping track of your life and a great way of keeping track of your education. Try doing that with your kids. Handwriting recognition is also amazing. There's a third-party app out there called Pen Ultimate. Um, you can find it for the iPad. Essentially, anything that you can write, it will send into Evernote. I don't know how it does it, but it works. It works great. Um, have some friends, if you're interested in learning how to do this, that use this thing on a daily basis. It's, it's just a great app. It's being updated constantly. And definitely check out Pen Ultimate. I don't know if it's free or if it's a couple bucks, but either way, it is really, really an amazing app. And, I, and Evernote does own that. So how do you use it with your students? Well, this year, we started to use it for student homework and communication. Again, I jumped right in in August and said, I got to figure out how to use this. I created, um, we created free Evernote accounts for all of our students. So. Uh, the first week or two of school, they went into Evernote.com. They created a free account. It was theirs. It's what they've got. They then share, created a folder. Sorry. They created a notebook. Evernote, not LiveMinders. They created a notebook called uh, Music Theory Class, and I had them put their name on it. And they then shared that notebook with me. Uh, age limit for Evernote, I don't know, 12 I don't, I don't know of an exact Evernote, but you know, as far as keeping things, my seven-month-olds have Evernote notebooks. Um, so 
all of the kids had a notebook. They shared that notebook with me. And let me show you what that looks like right here. So I have right here my stack of Evernote books. And right here is all of the kids' notebooks. And so um, the neat part about that is whenever they were creating notes or when we were doing things in classrooms, we were able to have them put it into their notebook. So for instance, here is an assignment that we were doing on the board, and I asked them all to take a picture of it. And so I suddenly had all of these uh, homework assignments coming in. You know, do your homework assignment, take a picture of it, put it in your Ever notebook. This was awesome. And the reason why it was awesome is because a few weeks later we had parent-teacher conferences and parents were like, well, what are my kids doing? And I didn't know who these kids were. You know, we never really know our kids in the third week of school. But I was able to open up Evernote and say, look at what our kids are doing. Look at their homework. Look at what they're not doing. Look at how they're doing it. This is why they're getting the grade that they are. And this is how much work they're putting into it. This was a lifesaver. This was simply awesome. Again, use Evernote to search for everything. Okay, here happens to be a picture of some recipe. It's talking about chicken. And in this example here, you type in the word chicken and it's actually reading the piece of paper. So, or the picture, I would say. That's, that's not text, that's actually built into the picture. So there's a lot of things here that it can do and do very, very well. Again, this is a notebook that we were using for our Tech Educator podcasting notes. It read inside this graphic, Tech Educator Podcast. Uh, let's see. Then, one of the things that we mentioned down here is Atlas. And if you're on your mobile device, and let's say that you're out at a lighthouse, and you're taking pictures in your Evernote book, or you are taking notes at a specific meeting or a family vacation or something, it will actually, if you turn on geotagging, it will actually keep track of where you are. And it'll, it'll organize notes based on your location. This is pretty cool because you can actually look at all of the pictures that you've taken from a specific location very, very easily. Many people like iPhoto. I love iPhoto. And iPhoto does have a feature on there where you can geotag your photos. But it doesn't have a feature where you can keep those photos everywhere that you go. Evernote, everything that I do gets stuck in here. And it's really, really simple. It's really, really amazing. Um, let's keep going because we're running out of time here. Contacts, business cards. We talked about you know, going to the next conference. You can use a, an app like Evernote Hello and simply sync and save everything that's in there. It'll find them. It'll take them. It'll, it'll sync up all your accounts really, really easy. It helps you organize your social life. Here's a neat little app called Evernote Food. If you simply open up Evernote Food, you can take your recipes and put them in. You can take other people's recipes and put them in. You can take pictures of what you're eating at the current moment and say, I'm at this restaurant in this city. By the way, it already knows that you're at that restaurant in that city because of geotagging. But it'll start to take track of what you do. It is great for finding recipes. It is great for saving recipes and, and, or making it into a little cookbook. It all saves everything into your notebook. There's, of course, several great third-party apps that you can use. Things like Audio Markdown is good for audio taking. DocuSign, I love Evernote because I can take contracts and I can sign them and I can send them right back to you without ever having to go onto my desktop. So, um, Definitely check out some of these Evernote-friendly apps. I'm going to go a little bit quicker. There is something called the Evernote App Center, which much like the iTunes App Store, it shares with you um, resources that are made for uh, Evernote. Um, one of the things that I definitely recommend if you have an Evernote account is an app called If This Then That, I-F-T-T-T. Um, it's essentially a tool, oh, Peggy, maybe you can help me organ uh, tell, describe what this is, or maybe somebody out there who's using it can describe what it is. But essentially, it is a helping tool. If, 
if something happens, then something else happens. So for instance, I have it set up where if I favorite a tweet, then that tweet gets put into an Evernote doc. Or if, uh, if I send an email, then all the attachments in that email go into Evernote. Um, so I, I don't I'll have the time right now to come up with all the different things, but definitely check out something called If This Then That. You will certainly thank me for it. So it's been a long webinar. Um, if you have done nothing, definitely spend some time after we're done here. Go to Evernote.com. Check out Evernote.com. Sign up for a free account. Dare yourself. It's only 45 bucks. Sign up for the premium account. You will certainly love it. Once you start putting stuff in there, you'll realize that that smart search is brilliant. Um, if you just do an app store search for Evernote, there are so many apps out there that hook into Evernote. Beware of what you're doing, though. I will definitely say there are some apps that are pretty junky that do look into Evernote, or you'll see some, some iPad apps that have an elephant, but it's not the official elephant. Just be aware. There's a lot, you know, with, with greatness comes a lot of copycats. Try not to get the copycats. Evernote is a huge company with millions and millions of users. Try to go for the official Evernote apps before you go for some of the, uh, the third-party things. So with that, those are the many reasons why any educator should be using it. So let's just go back to our three scenarios. You're in the classroom, and you want to help students set up a digital portfolio. Well, I think we can see right now, through using Evernote, you can save pictures, movies, you can take cameras out. If you're going on a field trip with your kids, have them open up their Evernote and just take pictures through the Evernote, and then on the bus ride on the way back or when they get back to school the next day, they can open up those Evernote and they can write a little narrative based off of each of the pictures that they've taken. It's great for scavenger hunts. Um, I'm an orchestra teacher. How do I use Evernote? Well, whenever I have kids coming in for violin lessons, we take out the Evernote and I record their lessons. So at the end of the lesson, we have this thing where you know, he, he or she can go back and listen to the lessons and write a little narrative about it. It is great. St scenario number two, you have presentations to make for Saturday morning. How many of you guys out there are tired of putting in a lot of time into Keynote and PowerPoint slides? you no longer really have to do that. Because Evernote has a great presentation tool, you can present right off of Evernote. And again, I'm going to see if I can get us the links to that presentation that I did uh, earlier, Peggy. But, um, but definitely look up, look, look up on YouTube for Evernote and presentations. It is a, an amazing thing. Thirdly, your hard drive is about to crash. What do you do? I, I had this situation a few months ago where I was trying to organize my digital life and you know you always have these years and years of folders and files that you think are important and then suddenly you stop using them for six years but they're important what do you do um, I quickly opened up Evernote and dumped as much stuff into Evernote as I humanly could and I didn't get everything but suddenly you're realizing that things like your teaching certificate would be great if it was on Evernote you know you, you need your teaching certificate like once in your life or twice in your life when you change jobs when else do you need it? Well, if it's an Evernote, you're always going to have it there. Or things like your resume, your cover letter, your you name it, your lesson plans, anything that you do, put into Evernote. If you have a project that you did that you're proud of, take a picture of it. Put it into Evernote. That night of back to school when your parents are there and you're trying to show your parents in you know, five minutes or less what you're doing, Open up Evernote, use the presentations tool, and you can just easily fly through some of the great stuff that you've done in class up to that point and that you're going to be doing in class to that point. So that is Evernote. Um, it's free. It's amazing. And if you have any questions, I will be here and would love to take questions. You can, of course, reach me on Twitter, at TeacherCast. I certainly hope you, you take a moment to check out the new TeacherCast.net. We are still building it, but uh, it's you know about 85% there right now, so take it out. Um, Lori has a lot of questions for me. Awesome. We have five minutes. <laughs> yes, I do. Shoot. Yes. No. I can stick around for a while, too, after 1 o'clock. OK. You, I think you answered about the security. Um, what about HIPAA compliance? You, I, it sounds like you already put confidential information, like medical records, into Evernote. So it, it sounds like you do that. I feel comfortable. Okay. 
good. Um, also, um, again, when you when you have Evernote Premium, they throw extra security on it. Right. But you know, like I, I, for, for those of you who know me, I I, I just had I have seven month old triplets. We <laughs> are still in the hospital stages with one of our kids. I mean, mm-hmm. we have so much information that it's hard to get. And hospitals are sending us all this paperwork. And my mm-hmm. answer is, can you just email me the PDF? Mm-hmm. And as soon as they do, I put it right into Evernote and I read it that way. Sure. Uh, sounds much better than Google Drive. Could it be better than Google Drive? No. Uh, understand that Google Drive has its purpose. Um, Evernote has its purpose. Can you put docs, uh, can you put PDFs into Google Drive? Yes. Um, does Google Drive read the docs? No. No. <laughs> um, can I put, okay, if I had a video file, I can put a video file into Evernote or into Google. If I put it into Google, like Dropbox, I will say, it will give you a, a URL for that video. It will give you an embed mm-hmm. code for that video. It will give you a way to put that video onto a website. If I put the video into Evernote, then I have it. It syncs up. I can download it if I need to, but I can't do anything with it. And the same thing goes for a PDF or a doc or something. If I put a PDF file into my Google Drive, suddenly I have a website that I can share with you, and we can both look at that PDF online. Um, I can manipulate it. I can edit it. I can do anything that I want to. Evernote doesn't give you that option. If I put a PDF into it, into Evernote, it will read it, but it's not going to give me an individual web address for that PDF. Right. I'll have an individual web address for the note, but that's sometimes different because I can make a note with 900 PDFs inside of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, this is something Peggy's asked a couple times. Can you demonstrate how to create notebooks and stacks? Um, can you share for that? I, I can. Um, and, and let me see if I'm, I'm searching YouTube right now for something here for you guys. Um, but the problem is it's different for everybody. Right. It, it's, it's just different for everybody. Um, and so I'm going to put this here. Here's a video that I did of creating presentations in Evernote. And if I do, and, and again, Peggy might already have this in here. Um, what in. about Evernote versus OneDrive? What used to be SkyDrive? Yeah, I stay away from Microsoft. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I've tried OneNote, and, and recently OneNote has come out for the Mac, and I, I installed it. But here's the difference. With Evernote, it's free, right? Mm-hmm. You can do it for free. With OneDrive, it's free to download, but then you've got to get a subscription service. And it's, it's cute, but it's, it just doesn't work sometimes. Evernote is completely free, yes. If you want to have more, um, you certainly can. But for you, know, you don't need to pay for this, unlike Microsoft, which tries to put you into a, pr- a premium program right away. All those links I put in the chat box are directly from TeacherCast YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. So check check those out. That's anything from um, recently we did we did two or three Tech Educator podcasts that featured live binders. Um, we also did uh, a principal cast of why to use Evernote in the principal's room, and I had a few other things in there too. So uh, should I open a new account on my Evernote is real disorganized? No. Um, organize what you have. Just start using metadata. A stack, uh, a stack is, is more than one notebook. So es- essentially you can do two things, and, and this is why it's hard to do the app sharing. If, you're, if you right click on a notebook, you can, you know, on the Mac client, you can drag two notebooks together and it'll make a stack. Much like when you're on an iPad and you're dragging two icons together, it makes a folder. It's the same concept. More questions. Does Evernote work with uh, smart boards with the presentation mode or? Yes, and it works extremely well too. Um, In fact, when you come and see me do this presentation live, um, I actually put a twist on it where I will start this presentation in Keynote 
and then I get to a certain point, and I'm going to give this away, but then I get to a certain point in my presentation, and I dump Keynote, and I do the whole rest of the presentation using Evernote. Mm -hmm. And it's got more videos and you know, lights and bells and whistles and stuff like that. But yeah, if you ever see me do this thing live, I, I do it half in Keynote, and I do it half in using Google Presentations, just to show that you can, you know, you can have a good time up on stage using, using Evernote, and only Evernote. Mm -hmm. Can students transfer from Weebly to Evernote? Would that be a difficult uh, process? You're talking two different. It's there apples and pears at that yeah, point. Yeah, two different applications. Tool. Yeah. Um, Evernote is not a website tool. Now, if you're going to say digital portfolio, let's use those two terms. Yes, mm -hmm. you can copy and paste. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just just like any website can hold a, a movie or a picture or something, Evernote can do the same. Um, what I suggest a college, uh, what I suggest a high school senior creating a Weebly website as a way to do a job interview, resume, college application, yes. Would I suggest them look, sending a college recruiter an Evernote notebook? No. Mm -hmm. um, only for the fact that the college recruiter might not know what Evernote is and what is this thing, whereas mm -hmm. everybody knows what a website is. Sure. However, um, if I know that you're an Evernote person, yes, I have an Evernote folder that has all my teaching certificates and my letters of recommendation and the All About Me page, and yeah, mm -hmm. here, have it. Mm -hmm. you know, this, this is who I am. I also have that in the website form. Mm -hmm. You mentioned penult penultimate. Does it require a special stylus? No, it's your finger. Hmm. Yeah, you, um, pen penultimate is is 100% use your finger. Hmm. Um, Sam, my co-host, uh, loves using things like penultimate, and then he makes slides out of them. Here's a question that just came in, uh, when Evernote clips a web page, is it storing a cached copy? What if the site goes away? Good question. Um, I clip everything in different formats. So mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know the answer to that, actually. Someone answered it. It seems like it's a copy of the page. So I if think the page so. goes down, then... Yeah. But, but all, all the links, I mean, every, it is a page of the page. Every, every, all the links work, even the advertising and stuff like that, all mm -hmm. the sidebar widgets. Um, generally, when I do a web clip, I clip just the content. So mm -hmm. you can make a selection. You can, create, you can select the full page. I mean, really, if you're going to find something, um, unfortunately, it doesn't work too well on YouTube. You, you can't clip a video um, mm -hmm. as well as you should be able to, I think. But if you know you're you're doing a current events thing and you happen to find something but you don't want to have all the junk on it, just copy the 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 article and then send your kids the link to the Evernote, and that way all the junk is left out of it. Mm -hmm. Is there still some special Post-it note like feature with Evernote? You know, I don't know too much about that. There is there are there is a partnership between Evernote and Post-its where um, Evernote will know that if you are using a red post-it, that goes in this folder, and a yellow post-it goes into this folder. And if you look at Tech Educator Podcast 45, which I put the link in there, um, we, we do cover that. We do hit how post-it notes work. Mm -hmm. um, I've never used the feature, but my co-host Jeff Herb, who does Instructional Tech Talk, has done that stuff. Mm -hmm. And... You know, definitely check check out uh, Tech Educator 45. We go over all of those different features. And you know, the neat part about Evernote is is what works for me might not work for you, and what and you might have something that's awesome about Evernote that I've never tried either. And you know, I'm seeing a lot of great links going through the videos here, or going through the chat here. There's just a lot of neat things. Mm -hmm. I think those are the questions I was able to capture. I have a question. Why not give it a try? Sure. Right? <laughs> if you're out there right now listening to this and there's a lot of people in the main room and you're like, I'm still not sure. Why? 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 
it's especially free. the free version, right? It's free. Yeah, I mean, give it a shot. If nothing else, just put, you know, just try it. You know, the business card scanner alone is is is, is the best freebie possible. Thanks a lot, Jeff. I think we'll head towards the closing of the show now. These are our upcoming shows in the next. Oh, Peggy's going to take over from here. I'm just going to jump in right here. And and uh, then I'll turn it back to you, Lori. Um, we have a, a very irregular schedule coming up, but we do have things happening with Classroom 2 Live. Next Saturday, there is no show. But Thursday, June 19th, we're uh, substituting a special LiveBinders webinar. They have a contest going on right now. And people have the opportunity to vote for their favorite top 10 live binders that are e-portfolios. I'm going to show you that, that link here. And I'll drop the link in the chat. You have an opportunity to vote on those. The top 10 are going to be announced on June 19th. And the people who have created those live binders are going to be in that webinar to tell you about their live binder. So I hope you'll be able to join us, even though it's a, a strange time for us. It will be 4 p.m. Pacific and 7 p.m. Eastern. Also, we'll be going on break for the month of July. Basically, we are gone during SD and the month of July. But we will be returning on our regular Saturday shows on August 2nd. While we're at ISTE, we're having a fantastic interview, a live interview with Jeff at TeacherCast. And as he mentioned at the beginning of the show, some of you may have missed that, he is broadcasting live every day from 9 to 12 at ISTE. And his sessions are going to be filled with interviews of ed tech leaders and uh, programs around the world. So be sure to tune in. If you can't go to ISTE, that's your next best opportunity to go. And um, all of those will be recorded, and they will be available on teachercast.tv to either watch live or watch the recordings. So be sure to check that out. Classroom 2 Live is going to be interviewed Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So if you can, if you're at ISTE and want to come in and join me in that conversation, I'd love to have you. So check us out. Also, there's a fabulous conference coming up, and that is the Reform Symposium. If you've never gone to that, it is an excellent international free virtual conference. It lasts for three days. And um, you will be hearing amazing keynotes and plenary presenters, music, poetry, just about everything you can imagine. It's a very exciting conference. So be sure to check that out. It's July 11th through the 13th. And um, all of it will be recorded. So if you have to miss sessions, you'll be able to go back and hear those. So uh, that's it for my upcoming shows. I hope to see many of you at ISTE and also especially to see all of you back here on August 2nd and June 19th for the LiveBinders webinar. Back to you, Lori. Thanks, Peggy. I wanted to make sure I didn't skip any of the slides. Uh, Steve Hargadon's newest ventures, The Learning Revolution, and uh, that symposium was part of this group of projects. He's gathered all of his uh, teacher um, professional development sessions basically in one place, including the Host Your Own webinar that's back. You can find that using at the Learning Revolution, and then you can 
have a free public event in a Blackboard Collaborate room. You can nominate a featured teacher to be on Classroom 2.0 Live by filling out the form at this URL that, that um, Peggy will put into the chat, CR20 Live Featured Teacher Nominate without the E at the end after tinyurl.com. And certainly you can nominate yourself to be a featured teacher of the month. When you exit the show, the Classroom 2.0 Live survey window should open for you. If it doesn't, you can take the link from the chat before you go. The link is always in the live binder as well. So you can uh, comment on today's show or any of the recordings that you watch. Uh, you can also use the survey for recording. When you do that, at the bottom of the, of the survey is some information for you to complete in order to get a professional development certificate for the show. When you request this, please use a, a personal email rather than the school email. A lot of schools will block receiving something like this. So uh, make sure your name and um, email address, of course, is spelled correctly when you ask. The video and audio collections for recordings are at iTunes U at this address. And you can also get to the recordings with the RSS feed as well on the Classroom 2.0 Live site. Just click on this link and post that into a, a feed reader. Special thanks again to Jeff Bradbury at TeacherCast for today's show, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for providing our website, and to everyone who participated in the show today, thank you all for coming. And remember, when you exit the show, please uh, do so so that the recording can process.